done on the office building to repair that whole plumbing system, which for years had been uh, broken, we couldn't use the back bathrooms. So all that was um, repaired primarily by Gura Karuna, uh, Jeff, and myself. So that was, um, that was accomplished in 2018. Uh, here in the temple, the ceiling, which had mold on it from, you know, the humidity in this area, no one needs to go and windows open in the summer. And, uh, you know, there's always incense smoke and we always are throwing water, gunga water somewhere. So that ceiling was cleansed for the three times, it was cleansed three times. One time by Mother Lilavata using uh, something like scrub free. Then by uh, uh, April, using uh, pure essential oil without anything uh, added to it. And finally, we had to come back with a mold uh, displacer or something that prohibits, gets rid of mold and prohibits it. Mm -hmm. And that job was done by Kara uh, with some help from uh, Dr. John and Dr. Valari. And today it is almost, it's, we could say mold free, there may be something hot enough there that we can't see yet because this stuff always comes back and it's part of the world unless you got a building that's built new and it's locked up and has central air and heating and the windows are very seldom open or the doors are very seldom open. Then you can usually pretty much prohibit it because nothing gets in there. If, if you keep the system clean, all those ducts clean. I mean, over years, eventually it'll sneak in. So, um, uh, there may be some stains up there where you know, they had scrubbed to get rid of it. So that was accomplished in 2018. Uh, we also had concrete laid in the gutters that along this wall right here, because of the way the building was built, it was built very amateurishly around 1979, after the original temple building burned down. This was built, or this was, maybe it was even started, it was going to be something like a facade and pavilion. But this devotee had some devotion, but he wasn't a professional builder, so he never built up earth so the water could run around. And so consequently, you know, everything coming off the road is going downward. And so, so all the water just runs right into the building. So they, they, they would always ditch around the building. So what was happening is that the water was, it was starting to go into the foundation. Mm. Eventually it would ruin the foundation. You know, you'd have to bring up, in New Orleans, if you'd ever turn on the radio, there's always an advertisement for people that fix foundations because this is a common thing in New Orleans that foundations break due to, uh, due to the uh, low water table there. And uh, they had to bring in you know, some professional company that can jack it all up and repair all under it and do whatever is necessary to make the foundation strong again. So what we did was we put concrete all the way up to the foundation so that the water can't get in. And that's along this wall and along the back wall, which is, there's no problem along this side. And I'm not 100% sure about, I don't think there's a problem in the front. There never was, but I can't so easily inspect it with the porch there, no, unless I crawl <coughs> under there and deal with whatever creatures are under there also. Oh. Um, so that was accomplished. That was a major accomplishment, actually, to save the building over over time. Mm -hmm. and just like for years we had this big, uh, tall tree, it actually survived Katrina and a few other hurricanes before that. That would grew right along the side of the building. And if you went up to that way top story, that tree was there, and you felt a little bit safer in case you happened to slip, you know. But that we had we had to take it down. Although Prabhupada didn't like trees cut after Katrina because of so much tree damage suffered um, from the buildings here. Uh, we had to take it down knowing that eventually it was going to collapse into the building. And there was a second major reason, because these types of trees have low roots, 
shallow roots. And so if you look at this, the floor in here, you can see there's some crack going along here. It's because it was cracking the foundation, mm -hmm. those roots. So we had to take that tree out. Uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't done this year, but that's um, had to do with trying to save the foundation of the building. Um, alrighty, so then let's see what else I have written here. Um, the big Jagannath again went to the Mardi Gras Ratiatra. He had a couple of years off due to weather, but he's been back for two years in a row now, I think. At least he definitely went last year. The, all the spotlights were replaced. It was almost a, a year I was trying to solve that problem. They had about four or five of them out up at the very top. And uh, Jeff went up there and we had purchased some new ones and he just replaced it. Replaced those spotlights up there. So that was accomplished. Uh, I, I, there was uh, a new codicy dress offered. I think that was the first time and I think they had that ever dress for as long as 15 years. Something like that. It's been around for a while. And of course, all the deity worship was maintained despite the uh, difficulties for pujaris and staff. And uh, again, you know, all the offerings and dressings and cookings and all that were done every day of the year, six times a day. And uh, including Mother Haridwani and crew making garlands. Hey, Tom. Hare Krishna. Tom always donated some flowers to deities. And Biloxi there runs an insurance business. Everybody needs auto insurance. All home and property. So, uh, all the deity worship was maintained. Number five is the cows and the calves. We save some cows and some calves from slaughter. Uh, we don't usually take cows and calves without people actually uh, giving lots to maintain them. Not that <clears throat> uh, somebody can just drop the calf and the cow off because they can't maintain it. They actually have means to maintain it. They just either tired of maintaining it or they don't have the uh, the plates to maintain because you can't maintain them in the city or they're moving and moving to the city. So, but we were contacted by uh, members from the Humane Society and one prominent uh, person in the vegan community in New Orleans who they support our cow festival very much every year. And somehow, however, they had inherited or had acquired some cows, but they, they could only keep them for a few weeks longer and they were going to have to let them go. So they asked us to please take them, and so mainly we did it just for some public relations there with the Louisiana Humane Society and people in the vegan community. And I believe we may have we picked up another one that some former just kind of left, and it was you know really un uh, it, it you know needed food and uh, it was in bad shape. It was a milk milk cow and a calf, and I think it's a purebred Jersey. He gave it to us for six hundred dollars, which is like three or four times below the price because of its serious health condition. So we rescued that cow, and you know it gives milk, and its health has improved. And calf is doing good. And there may have been some evidence. Jonty would have to chime in on all this. You know she knows all the score of this, and I didn't talk to her before I wrote this down. Just going by what I remember. So there were some cows and calves saved from the slaughterhouse. The, the herd, of course, was again, uh, has been maintained the best ever, many times getting to eat uh, 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 that type of grass that we, we uh, grow and we sell to the horse farmers all around here because they need a higher quality of hay. Usually that's not fed to cows, but you know, we, we've been feeding that to the cows along with rye grass in the winter and, and the natural bahia grass that grows here. So the cows uh, have been doing really good. The milk cows, the bulls, all the oxen, as well as all the retired cows and all of the calves doing uh, really good. Uh, um, 
I don't know if they have the figure right, but I believe that Hay program earned in the neighborhood of $30,000, and that was able to maintain, you know, all the expenses. You know, we could, we could use uh, more lodge meat because we were not able to put a whole lot into the fields that we uh, accept those fields where we grow Bermuda grass. We grow Bermuda grass to sell to the horse farmers. We had to put some sort of organic fertilizer on that. But uh, a lot of our other fields, we're not able to fertilize or lime, and it's just the bahia grass that comes up every year. So, um, but we did earn thirty thousand dollars through the hay program to uh, maintain all this program. Okay, that's. I'm sure there was more with the cows, but that's what I wrote down there. Um, for 2018, number six, was we planted several gardens. There are several gardens planted around here. John Thies Garden gave a tremendous amount of loki squash and berries that were vegetable, shastras, eggplants, and uh, uh, zucchini, and um, what do they call that? The, you know, Corella squash. Uh, gave plenty of that. You know, Dwee Buja and Jesse's Garden from here. Uh, and uh, uh, Krishna Shrai and Madhava Priya. Uh, we finished off, we have a top of Punja head growing out there. To, and, um, and since then, Kara's put in a garden and, and Jesse's put in a winter garden and just harvested a color flower yesterday. So there's, uh, you know, we did pretty good, but we have, you know, uh, bigger plans for 2019. For some reason, April asked me just today, you know, how much we spend on food every month. She was hoping to, I guess, try to be able to grow more food to chip away at that. But we, we do spend in the neighborhood of $2,000 a month on Boga, which is, I mean, New Orleans Temple probably spends 1000 a week, if not 2000 <laughs> So, you know, it's not a lot for a community, for a family, it would maybe be small family would be a lot, but, uh, uh, you know, that's, what, that's about what we spend every week. Okay, so moving on from there, we uh, uh, maintained uh, all of the uh, buildings. There was a lot of work put in on different buildings. All these buildings have been maintained. The roads have been maintained. You know, although the rain is washing them out again, but you know, after all that, the rain stops, we'll have them all graded again. Uh, <clears throat> the wells have been maintained, the grounds have been maintained, as well as other things that I didn't think of when I was composing this, have all been maintained throughout the year, and that's a constant, constant chore. As John can tell you, he just cleaned up all around back, got all that dirt right, and then tremendous thunderstorms came and kind of like washed it all out and we had to do some other things. And so it's a con constant maintenance program around here to stop the erosion and, and uh, make everything uh, accessible through uh, good roads and, uh, and uh, despite the buildings being pretty rusty, if they're not maintained then they become inhabitable, practically speaking. So. Uh, after that, we also maintained all of the new, the new as well as old devotees were all cared for, the best of our ability. Certainly there could be some improvement, but for the most part, you know, people have been kind of taken care of, even Taliban, who is suffering with Parkinson, you know, Bushai is working on it full time, he just happened to catch him in between jobs, if he ever goes back to a job. Uh, since he himself is not a young spring chicken, but he's been taking care of Taliban. And the uh, group of Prabhu was taken care of, you know, by the grace of uh, Sri Rai, who's been letting him live in his house the past year. And, you know, all the devotees that uh, helped him along the way, including John D, who would bring some yoga every week, and different other... So, uh, devotees who have been uh, sick or Old have been taken care of as well as all the new devotees like uh, Angie showing up from the Lafayette, Louisiana area in Cajun country with famous French name. How do you say your last name? Luquette. Huh? Luquette. 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 Hare Krishna. 
Angie, it's not Angie, Ann, is it? Ray. And, yeah, Angie Ray, so one of those typical southern Mopan United States names. Uh, okay, so then uh, another accomplishment was that we got official approval from the state of Mississippi to be an agritourism spot within the state. Uh, that's a, uh, a major accomplishment. Goes a long way to uh, making it a lot more easy for people to find the Taliban and to come here and to go away um, with a smile on their face, happy that they've been able to acquire and see things that they can't always acquire and see in the uh, surrounding cities. So that was accomplished, and uh, there's a lot more that has to go along with that. We're not completely finished with that, but we're working on it. The county and state, this is a real big accomplishment here, the county and the state agreed to give property tax exemption for all the pasture lands and buildings in our uh, cow protection program. Even Mugen uh, Daden does not have that. And I would assume that they're paying uh, taxes according to the rate that farmers pay. Farmers, farmland gets a smaller property tax than residential houses do. Residents, every resident in the United States can take a homestead exemption on one home. And so that usually cuts it in half, the amount of property tax you pay. And that's the way every county in the United States maintains the infrastructure and the administration and the police and the education and all that. So it's, you know, I mean, they're very serious about collecting that money. So I know Balabhadra, who runs the uh, International Cow Protection Program and protects oxen in Florida. He does not even have, uh, he does not even have uh, his land being raided at farmland mm -hmm. and the county won't give it to him for various reasons so he's taxed at residential rates. Wow. So uh, uh, Gita Nagri, if I'm not mistaken, also does not have that. They may have they may have farm being taxed at farm rates because they're operating a commercial dairy, selling nonviolent, uh, no karma, no slaughter uh, milk to all of our temples in the Northeast and make nice cheese, which you can order online. I think their website is uh, NG for Gita Nagri, NG, uh, NG something, you know. Uh, but you can, you can purchase their cheese online there. So, but uh, New Taliban not only has, not only is all of our land taxed at, uh, at farm rates, but now we also have not only tax exemption on the temple and surrounding buildings that have to do with the, uh, uh, you know, the worship program, the religious organization program, but also the adopt the cow program is also tax exempt. Which means our taxes, were, which were at about 7500 a year, and that was after the temple and Sunday school building and the office buildings and the pavilion and Tulsi Greenhouse, all those buildings were, were exempt. It was about 7500 a year. It's been, when I got the taxes for, that, which we had to pay before the end of the month before it starts incurring interest, uh, it was down to about I think 5,600 or 5,200 now. So that was a big help. And we're still $1,000 short of that on our little thermometer over there for collecting the taxes for this year. Okay, uh, so that was a big accomplishment. And it, it, it did require an attorney, although the tax assessor, he looked me in the eye in a really humble way too, and he said, you didn't have to hire an attorney. You couldn't just come to me. <laughs> I, did, I didn't I like, challenge him or anything. I just said, 
Uh, but it was our congregation, you know, some of the devotees in the congregation, you know, they were really serious about this, and so they hired the best attorney in the state of Mississippi to talk to you about this. <laughs> 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 anyway, it all came to be, because ultimately he didn't have the final say. He, the, uh, the tax department in the state of Mississippi is the only department that has quality control, which means the state oversees it and makes sure that... Uh, Anything that's not taxed is given a very legitimate exempt exemption. And of course, they want to make sure that everything that's being taxed is taxed at the proper rates. So um, he submitted it to the state, and surprisingly enough, within like three weeks, the state accepted it. And you know, so that was a real accomplishment this year. Uh, we also we may have done this at the end of 2016, but again, you know, we, we've only had property and liability insurance once out of all these years since 1974. And we, our policy at that time, it was for one year for $100,000, and when the adjuster came out to inspect things and he saw this four-story building, which used to be where the uh, pavilion is today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he immediately, they immediately dropped us. They just saw it as a, you know, a hazard, you know. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, it, and, it, and, you know, rightfully speaking, if I was insuring people, I probably wouldn't have insured it either. But uh, uh, by uh, Joy's uh, uh, grace, you know, she funded the, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, church insurance companies which specializes in churches found them very uh, you know non prejudiced you know, very opening open to funding any religious organization mm -hmm. the, the gentleman was you know extremely uh, friendly and nice and easy to work with and uh, you know so currently uh, we have liability insurance for a million dollars and uh, and a lot of the buildings have fire and uh, I think water insurance. Uh, when in this area of Hancock County, right off the Gulf of Mexico, is extremely expensive to carry. So I'm, I'm not sure if we actually have wind on, on, on the building, but a number of the buildings do have fire insurance on it. And also theft and uh, I don't know, a few other things they throw in there. Really good company to work with called uh, Church Mutual or something like that. Maybe Tom knows them since he's in the industry. You know. They're the largest church Large. insurer in the United States. Yeah. Good freak. They, they insure a lot of, of course, many, many uh, Christian churches. I'm not sure if they do Catholic Church. Catholic Church may have their own insurance. They yeah. do a lot of Protestant churches and uh, a lot of uh, synagogues, mosques, <clears throat> and uh, Hindu temples as well. I don't know how many of these come uh, facilities they do beside ourselves. <clears throat> Another big accomplishment by uh, Krishna's grace, Krishna, meaning not only the big Krishna, but also the little Krishna, Krishna Devi Dasi, herself, and some help from uh, Shrika and uh, Lakshmi Shrina and Bhakti Jesse. We got up a new website, which uh, I think the original one we put up was somewhere around the turn of the century done by, uh, by the Jagannath and Kalavati. <coughs> das Das did a lot of work on it. And then uh, Taliban did a little stuff on some stuff on it. And, uh, and then for a number of years since at least uh, Katrina, Tapan Mishra and Wallings was our webmaster and made all changes for me and put up anything new and, and you know, advertised all the festivals and all that stuff. Anyway, it was due for a change, and I, I kept getting probed by different people, and finally, after the second time asking, we went with Krishna. And so the new website is up and running, connected to brand new uh, Facebook page and Instagram pages. Instagram being taken care of by Dr. Jesse. Facebook, I'm not sure besides myself who posts to it. There's someone been designated 
and uh, the website changes are handled by Lakshmi Shringam and uh, Ashtika and Krishna is not to be involved but because something needs to be changed she still keeps getting letters she just sent me another new letter today uh, that you know is going to her email rather than to Lakshmi Shringam's email so that, that was a really a big accomplishment I haven't noticed any donations tapering off uh, they, uh, but I won't know for a couple of months. People get used to doing things, and you know, so uh, <clears throat> I'm eager to see if our donation, how much our donations increase on on the website by, you know, making it uh, having revamped the whole thing. So we'll see. Okay, uh, we also have a new website for the cow fest. And I think that was done by Guru Karuna initially and then uh, Ish, Ishwari. And I'm not sure who's maintaining it. Nothing's happened since the cow fest and the same with the Facebook page. So I'm not sure what's going on with our Facebook page and website for the cow fest. Astika Prabhu also did one for Marani's uh, for good karma and uh, golf court, not New Orleans. New Orleans mainly operates through their Facebook page. And uh, Stika also did a little bit of an online store, which we don't promote a whole lot. We need to do a little bit more with that. But that was also done this year. Um, so that brings us to like 12 individual things. I don't know what I missed. I'm sure that list could go on a little bit. Um, unless somebody's got something to add to that, I'm going to move on to the goals for 2016. Yeah. Uh, we had a couple of calves born. Yeah, that was, that's be included in the cow. But looking at you, I'm sure you could give us, you could tell us what was accomplished in the field of permaculture for 2018. Okay, uh, Krishna Shriya has got a really nice uh, uh, permaculture site. Uh, in front of his house, and uh, uh, as you mentioned, Jesse and Kara have a uh, garden down in the lower field, and Jesse has also just recently started the field two uh, garden, and this field behind us uh, is being prepared for 106 uh, fruit trees that were ordered through the USDA and they'll be delivered at the end of this month and we'll be putting them on this field behind us. You also graduated some students, I don't know, maybe Krishna Shraya and I were pretty with 2017, but maybe you can... Yes, that, that was also, uh, they graduated here in front of their worships and Sri Prabhupada on January 8th of this year. Of this, this year? Past year. And uh, so we have two new permaculture designers in the community, and we have two more that took the course this year, but uh, the uh, results aren't in yet. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but they're they're uh, enlightened considerably more than they were before. A major thing that I forgot to mention took a lot of time and hours, but we also uh, renewed um, vision mission and values statements, which is posted on the wall up here and a couple other places around the Taliban. So that took a lot of man hours and work that we put into doing that. So that's a completely new accomplishment for 2018. I'll have to put that down. So let's move on. We only got maybe 14 minutes here before you know we're going to serve the Prasada. So our goals that I have in mind for 2019, this doesn't include everyone's goals or community management team's goals or whatever goes out there with you know, any other devotee or group of devotees. So, <clears throat> it, I know we've said this before, but it looks like the pavilion public bathrooms will be renovated this year and as well as being made handicap accessible. So, you know, the, the public bathrooms at the pavilion will be completely renovated and made handicap accessible. 
So that's a big job when Shirai gets back, and it's going to be a, make it a little bit austere because we won't be able to use those bathrooms. He's going to start demolishing everything right from the beginning, so he's not going to do one and keep one open and then do the next one while the new one's available. Both of them are going to go down simultaneously, and he's going to work as quick as possible. If he has help, he can do it quicker, so you may want to keep that in mind, John. If he has help, he can do it quicker. Maybe, you know, we can involve Jeff and anybody else that's got some time because, you know, if he has to do it himself, it's just going to take longer. But he's the man who knows how to do it all. He has currently been engaged by our North American World Headquarters, uh, uh, where the uh, Lord resides is Rukmini Dwarkadish in Los Angeles, California, completely renovating that majority room after renovating his kind's majority room in Denver, Colorado. So, I mean, he definitely has the skill and the talent to do this work. He just needs some hands, and of course, the Lakshmi has already been collected for that job. Okay, uh, after that, uh, there's quite a possibility, once that's done, and we may, this year, may run into next year, but uh, uh, we will upgrade the children's playground, and also it will have some handicap facility for handicapped children. So there will be an upgrading of the children's playground on the side of the pavilion in front of the a little store we have. Maybe this year as well as next year, we have to see how it goes. Uh, the agritourism program should officially start this year. Although we have the, you know, we have the official spot, I, I don't believe it's, it's up on their website yet. I have to check. I know the signs have not been posted off the of state highways. But um, we also have to start with a official advertised day that we're doing it, or days that we're doing it, and what we're doing like that, and then we have to actually do that. It's not that people will just drop out here and then there's no one on hand to uh, accommodate them or to show them what's available but to actually give them a little tour of everything that goes on here that's concerned with agritourism, such as uh, Kushner's Dairy and the gardens primarily, as well as, you know, fruit trees and permaculture. So there's a lot that goes on that, you know, people are interested in and they want to see out in the country. Things you don't get to see in the city, which, you know, where most, so many people live, you know. Alrighty, so that has to happen this year. Also, we would like, it definitely has to get started, the new guest facility. So whether it's the Dwebuja uh, program or the Sri Rai program, one of those two have to be started. So when that will happen, we have to see they're still trying to uh, deal, they're still dealing with the foundation down at the uh, permit office in the county. So we'll see in the near future how that's going to uh, how that's going to go, but that that will be started this year. I did get a call from Ambassador Ghosh, who plans to be back in the country. And when he is back, if something started, then he hopes to be able to solicit some more contributions from some uh, people and places that he may he may go to while uh, in America. For those who don't know, Basu Ghosh is our temple president at Iskand's Abhmabai Temple in Gujarat. He's a little bit unique because he's married to a Gujarati, but he's an American with Indian citizenship. And so uh, he's, uh, you know, unique in that way. But he, you know, he's been there in Abhmabai as the temple president for about 30 years now. Okay, uh, next thing. Uh, Again, all of the current programs uh, that are going on will be maintained and hopefully expanded to some degree. And there's, you know, besides the washer program, the cow program, the garden programs, and, you know, maintaining the ground and the building programs, all that has to be done in order for the Taliban to exist. 
Okay, um, I guess it's sort of the same thing. Number six, an expanded garden program. You know, we will be taking over field number one as soon as Tampa Punja pulls out from the inaugury. Um, we'll be, you know, starting to work in there. Um, Balaram and Tamal Krishna want to grow some potatoes. Nobody's never been able to grow as many potatoes as we use, although we get close to it to a couple of months, but then after that we use them all up and have to go buy some. But, um, you know, and it's hard without chemical fertilizer and herbicide because, you know, you have to pull the grass or find something organic that keeps it away. You can try to do like top of punch and put down that matting and stuff, but then, you know, the plant, you don't really get to breathe as well, and nor does it hold water as well, and it's harder to fertilize it, you know, it's easier when you can just, you know, rake in the cow dung and just pile up that soil and put the plants in. So fall gardens are easier because you deal less with weeds. But once that spring hits, you know, everything on earth starts to grow out there along with what you planted. So, so it's a little bit more difficult for them if they're pulling grass. We can always fertilize with cow dung. We don't need to buy anything. Uh, so anyway, we do hope to expand some you know, more gardening programs. Uh, number seven is there will be renovations starting to go on in Gokula's apartment, as well as uh, possibly in the upstairs apartment on the right of that two-story building, uh, and also perhaps this year in the Sunday school room being uh, renovated. So that's all happened in, that, in the two-story building. Uh, number eight, uh, we will lay sod all along here to keep the washout off as well as along the walkway to the kitchen and around back and along parts of the sidewalk and other places um, with, you know, Dr. John's uh, uh, powerful uh, service ethic. You know, he will lay that sod down in all those places. As soon as it quits raining, you know, and they can actually cut some and bring it on out. They, they will, but you know, the rain, of course, has everything washed out, frankly speaking. So that will happen as soon as possible. And the last thing I have written down here uh, is uh, we're working with uh, Mahatma to uh, sell books on Amazon. She's allowing me to take over her account and giving us a bunch of books. And of course, we'll sell our own books. You know, Prabhupada's books, as well as other books that we sell, such as Satyarajas and Nandanandanas and a number of other devotee authors and all the biographies that have been done on Shiva Prabhupada. And so many Vedic literatures that have been translated, especially the works of uh, the Goswamis of Vrindavan and just so, so, so many other books. We can, we'll sell that right on Amazon at a competitive price, if not undercutting everybody else's price who sells the same book. So uh, that will be done and we'll also, I'm working with her to create a, um, a library, which is something we've been doing before. I, she showed uh, interest in doing something here, Newman, New Taliban, she was doing something there in Elijah, um, um, but decided to throw the books and her energy into helping us to accomplish our library program. <clears throat> we were working with the, um, that little yellow building that's along um, the road where all those little cabins are. It, uh, actually, it was renovated completely, the outside was completely renovated with funds that were collected for that library. And some materials bought also with funds that were collected um, you know, for this library program. And, um, and Sri Rag actually built shelves for it. We had a professional theologian who was going to be the librarian, and when he got disinvolved, then there was some question when we would be able to make it happen, and Sri Rag took one, two, two of those shelves and put them in here in the back of the temple, and actually three, one, two, three. So they were taken out of the library and put in here. And he 
took the big one that was right down the middle and I gave him permission to use it at his house that he built. He had done so much work for us and built his own house. And I gave it to him as a, uh, like a tree. Uh, you know, he uses it to keep all of his tools in over his house. So, but that can easily, be easily rebuilt if we did it. But I think we have different plans. We're not going to build that down the middle. We're probably just going to put the wall in. Right now, I'm trying to persuade the uh, any devotees that have any concern that I'd like to uh, utilize it for the library as well as a, a resident. Uh, for uh, some qualified body to stay and understand the books and those and they can uh, talk to people about them and other people can come and also check it out. Uh, the, it's been toned down more to a Vedic library. Originally it was conceived as a, uh, a book, a, a library for rare theological books because it had someone that was donating a lot of rare theological books that were brought in people involved in theology and academics from around the country who had an interest in a certain book that they would make, that they would possibly, possibly be able to find here. But I kind of lost that connection, and so we're, we're just going to do our, our baby books and whatever books we acquire. And that may be actually still able to get some of those rare theological books. I do have a connection with that person who is going to uh, give them. It's just a matter of being able to uh, again, persuade that person to uh, give us some of those. So anyway, I'm hoping that that will still happen over there. Although, uh, you know, there's some interest in creating the library in some place else. Um, for example, in Sri Rag Prabhu's plans for a guest house included a lounge and library. And that's where I thought I was going to put, do it. Uh, and I didn't have as much of an interest over here. But it's, you know, Sri Rod probably wouldn't even begin working on it if we collect the money for it. It's a $150,000 project built in Bosque style with a uh, courtyard in the middle of it. Five room guest house with a lounge and library, kitchen and big living room. I think it's 22,000 to 2,400 square feet. But, you know, he probably, because of doing the bathroom program first, and a number of other little repair jobs, and maybe supervising the, 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 the four room guest house that uh, Sri Bhuja is hoping to put up, a concrete guest house, uh, Sri Rag may end up helping to contract that as supervisor. And so he probably wouldn't even start another one until 2020 or beyond. So that's where the library was going to go. And I had collected some money for that. And so we had to see, all this has to be worked out, you know, with ever uh, uh, devotee so that everyone's as happy as possible. All right, so that's the very last thing I have on my list. As I'm sure there's ever goes that uh, you know, I didn't touch upon and don't come in my mind that ever people are putting emphasis on. And um, but you know we just haven't really got to talk about it much as a group. And you know sometimes things manifest during the year. You know different opportunities come and you have to take advantage of them. All right, uh, so it's time for Prasadam. Anything before we close up? Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Shri Mati Akadasi Devi Ki Jai.